This is our self-protection series with Bryce Frank on striking. And of course, this isn't the end all be all. We're talking about where a person, even somebody that's got skills, right? This is yeah. a, a place to like reset your brain from training for MMA or training for the ring to transfer that to the street. Now I've got a lot of friends and you got a lot of friends that are serious MMA fighters and most of them are gonna be able to do A-OK -okay out in the Absolutely. world. But I think what this is really directed to is the person that's starting from scratch or with little know-how to right. get them a really great foundation yeah. to where they can use their hands if need be to protect themselves. Absolutely, yeah. Because you know, I don't. I, I believe, and I've said this before. I believe that grappling should form the base of your self-defense curriculum. But I also think that you have to augment that with a little bit of striking, okay? Especially when we start talking about multiple adversaries and stuff like that. It's really important that I stay upright and mobile. And the ability to move and hit is gonna help uh, greatly with that. Um, and it might not always be appropriate to draw a pistol on somebody. Right on. So, you know, I might need to be able to handle those skills with my hands uh, initially before I can, you know, go, you know, be at a level of force where maybe it's appropriate to use deadly force or, or you know, put, point a gun at somebody. So a couple things uh, you also bring to the table. You are a law enforcement officer. You train combatives around the country. You are a trainer for ILEDA, yes. which is national organization for law enforcement instructors. And so the reason I bring that up is there's context to that. Right. So we've got this force continuum, right? That's right. how it's, that's how it's described. It's if, if, if you're at the proverbial ATM, turn around mm -hmm. for me, yeah. and I come ambush you and start chopping on you with a machete, right. of course you're not gonna be able to go through this sir back up. Sir, You've back now up. got, yeah. uh, you gotta save yourself. Right, absolutely. But yeah. but there's a lot of times that we should be using our words effectively. Mm -hmm. Craig Douglas talks about it a lot, about effective communication, because if I just say stop, 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 right. that's different than stop moving, Put your hands above your head. Right. Get on your knees. Absolutely. Face away from me. The very explicit, succinct speech. Yeah, and, and Craig's the Craig's the master of that. His his muck managing unknown con, uh, contacts is uh, you know outstanding material for mm -hmm. that. But you know when we think about verbal strategies, I generally follow a strategy of ask them, tell them, make them. Okay. So let's just role play this. Okay. I've got mitts on because you might strike me. Mm -hmm. You've also got a blue gun, a Glock blue gun on you. And we'll just like, you know, play a little scenario. You're out in the world, minding your own business. Hey man, you got a light on you? Sir, could you hold up right there for me? Dude, what the f is your problem? I, I asked for a lighter. I don't have a problem. I don't, I'm you, sorry, I don't have of... a light on me. No, I don't. I'm sorry, but yeah. Okay, I don't, fine. I... You don't have a lighter on you. Like, okay. I just tried to ask you if you got a lighter. Okay. And all of a sudden, like out of the blue, you just sir, become I'm a gonna, dickhead. Sir, you must I'm be a cop. You, no. you must be a cop. No. You got a haircut like a sir, cop. I'm going to ask you, you, you to back off. You freaking talk like a cop. Back the what? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't plan that out at all, but I think that was. But that there was, yeah, there was, you, you managed space. Right. I, you knew you could have stay in frame for our filming. You right. probably would have made more space. Right. But I think that we did some force on force at one of our S12 events, and we had that exact same scenario go down. And the guy that was uh, in your position, he was the, the student, the role player came up, asked for a light. In the scenario, that person had, he was not gonna be an aggressor at all. Mm -hmm. But that dude was ready to get in ready the fight. Ready to go. He yep. drew his gun out, like, mm -hmm. let's do it again. And this is yep. what it looked like. You draw, hey man, you got a light? Yeah, and the guy's like, dude, I just wanted to get a light. Like, he was ready to go. Yeah. Yep. So, the whole premise of this series is that we're working on managing the space around us, right. learning how to use our hands effectively, but now adding in words. Right, yeah, so we need to think about that, you know, before it goes kinetic, right? And uh, how we're gonna manage that. I believe in, I, I said the verbal strategy is ask them, tell them, make them, okay? Now, how many times I'm gonna ask you versus how quickly I'll tell you versus how quickly I'll go to making you is gonna be very situationally dependent, all right? But understanding that a lot of times asking somebody to do something has the same practical effect as telling them, but it lets them think they have stake in the decision. Let's right? do, give me an example of so that. So if you're, if you're approaching me and I say, hey, could you hold up right there for me? And you yeah, sure, because you believe you're making that decision to hold up. I'm not, it's really not a request on my part. But you're phrasing it but as a request. I'm phrasing it as a request because I'm showing some respect for you. Know, for you. So as you, you approach and I say, hey, could you hold up right there? You know, and if I can get compliance with that, perfect. I d haven't done anything to escalate the situation at all, 
I've got what I want, which is compliance from you, and now we can have this discussion. There's a key, not escalating the situation. Absolutely. Hey, man, back off. Right. You know, or you are an aggressive man. I, yeah. you know, I, Right, so this boils down to, you know, verbal, paraverbal, and nonverbal communication, right? So what I'm saying, how I'm saying it, and what I'm doing with my body language as I'm saying it, you know? And in that scenario, I came into you, and you, it wasn't, no, I'm not going into any type of fighting stance. I'm using that defensive posture that we had talked about earlier, right? Where the hands are making a fence Which between us. Which for you, if I decide well, to strike you, I you can, can go right into those, yeah, the, the cover and crash, or the the cover and crash, or the the long cover that we've mm -hmm. talked about in other videos. And you know, I'll have that same practical effect again a lot of times as being like, stop right there, you know. But now I have somewhere where I can go if that first that initial. Hey, you, you you've kind of right drawn there? the line in right. the sand for yeah. the, the. Hey, could you hold up right there? You choose not to to honor that request. Now I'm going to get a little more forceful with my voice. I said stop. <laughs> Problem, man. Right. And then if it goes beyond that, even you know, I might need to get louder still. Not only to emphasize the point to you, but maybe I'm drawing the attention of other people too. Because if you really are a predatory person, you probably don't want an audience. Yeah. Right. That's a good point. You know, the other thing you need to think about is how we're going to talk to somebody, right? So if I. You know, you need to understand that there's a big difference between telling somebody back the f and back off. F that has a, you know, can have a very different effect on the person you're talking to. Makes and Craig's sense. talked about that a lot in his muck. Yeah. muck uh, Psychologically, would you call me? Right, yeah, you know, because it's that you're insulting me, you know, versus emphasizing the point, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So those are things to think about in your, in your verbal strategy. So as we're working through some of these concepts and ideas of, of striking and managing space, how can we employ this verbal stuff in concert with that whole uh, concept? I think one of the best things you can do without going into full-blown scenarios, like role which, play type scenarios. Which our friend Paul Sharp doesn't like because a lot of times it can just become like acting class. Right. And you don't, yeah. the people involved are no longer getting out of yeah. it what they need to. There can be a value to that, certainly at times. Sure. Think, think of that like the test, right? Like, you know, if training is studying and, you know, running a full-blown scenario like that is more like the test, so you can test out some of the things that you've been training. But we want to think about developing verbal scripts that you can use. You know, so I know if, if you're approaching me, I know I'm going to say, hey, could you could you hold up right there? And if you don't, re if you don't respect that, I said, I said, stop. You know, I know that this is kind of the progression that I'm going to go through, so I don't need now, to think that, about that, what I'm that saying. That person now knows. He told me twice. You know, based on their response, either they're they're drunk, they're high, they're deaf, yeah. something. They're you've given them a few opportunities to respond to right. your your wishes. Right. And you think about you know <clears throat> how much energy I have to spend cognitively. So I have a lot of things to manage. I have to manage you. I have to manage if there's some, the, uh, the rest of this space around me. Do you have somebody with you? Mm -hmm. These are all things I need to think about managing. You know, the environment. Am I going to trip over a curb? You know, things that are not, you know, we're not going to have on a nice matted area like this. You know, but these are things I need to think about in the real world. So if I need to spend a lot of my cognitive energy on what I'm saying, I have less to deal with you, the person in front of me. You know, so I think one of the really because difficult- I'm reaching, reaching, reaching. Right, for... because I'm not paying attention to mm -hmm. those things. And that's what's challenging. That's why I say, you know, you can't develop a verbal script for every situation you're gonna come across, obviously, but you wanna do the best you can to develop these verbal scripts. So you know, hey, when this, this person approaches me for something, I'm gonna say, hey, could you hold up right there? Look, I'll talk to you, I've got no problem talking to you, but we're gonna have a conversation on my terms with you respecting my space. You know, and, and I'll explain that to people if I have to, you know. And of course that, so you guys understand, that deals with a cross section of the bad things that happen. Right. Criminal violence where some dude's looking at you as a target that he's waiting to pounce on you. Mm -hmm. That whole scenario is never gonna happen. Right, yeah. This is, like, this is a cross section. Right, yeah. yeah. So, you know, think about developing those scripts, what you're gonna say, how you're gonna say it, think about your verbalization, your paraverbal skills, your nonverbal skills, and most importantly, think about managing that space. I dig it. I appreciate you, man. You guys watching this stuff, I hope you watch the whole series. I hope you go follow him, Bryce Frank, and you can Google and see a bunch of footage of him in his heyday of, of heavyweight Muay Thai fighting. 
I met you through Paul Sharp, our friend from SBG here near Chicago. Great group of dudes. Yep. Uh, the whole ShivWorks uh, group is, and you fit right in there with uh, highly skilled and, and uh, uh, you know great approach to teaching. So I appreciate you doing this. If you guys dug this series, ask us for more. Post some comments online, share this stuff with your friends, and tell us what you think. If you're the kind of person that wants to share some goofiness, like you didn't like a technique, Keep it to yourself unless you have a national title under your belt. <laughs> Mickey with CurryTrainer.com, Drew behind the camera, and our man Bryce Frank. Parting words? Oh, well, sir, I think we covered it well. Thank you. Thanks. Be good, guys. Don't be dickheads. We're going to go have some soup. You're cool, man. I ain't going to hurt you, man. I ain't going to hurt you, man. I just, I just need some money. I got nothing for you. you get back some, off, give me some damn money, man. I know you got some money. You got some nice clothes on. I got nothing. I know you got some money, man. Come on, man. Help me out. Back up. Help me out, man. Just give me some money. Nope. You got a back I won't up, hurt man. you. I got nothing for you. I won't hurt you, man. I won't hurt you. What? You got a gun, man. What? You got a gun. I got nothing for Why you. Why you got a gun on? So, you're on your way home. This is a convenience store. You've not been in it before. Okay. So, whatever, you know, convenience store. The two orange cones are the entrance. You gonna well, you shoot somebody? You gonna shoot you. me? No, go on. No, man, I ain't hurt you, man. No, just go on. I don't wanna hurt you. Just, no. I just need some money. I just need go some on, money. Go on, man. I got nothing for you. Get your ass on up out of here, dude. Go you on. give me no damn money. Go I don't wanna see your white ass up in here anyway. Back up. Get out. Back up. Enter the scene.